Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, it's Mizuki Arts. Today we are going to be talking about bad art habits. Um, I'm guilty of all of these, by the way, so if you identify with any one of these or, um, you know, anything like that, um, I just know you're not alone. Obviously, I'm, I'm talking about them because I either know people who've experienced them and realized it was holding them back or... I have experienced them and realized how it was holding me back. Um, and just so you know, uh, if you disagree with me on this, I will personally um, not take offense to that. <laughs> so, um, you know, everyone's experience with art is different and art is subjective. So if you don't agree with my takes on these or you don't think they're necessarily negative, that is perfectly fine. Before we get started, I want to give a big old shout out to Ashley and Michelle Kelly for supporting me on Ko-fi. Thank you guys so much. Uh, thanks to your guys' support. I get to do all the fun artsy stuff like uh, buying art supplies and, uh, you know, fund my education and things like that. So thank you guys. Um, and on with the video. The first bad art habit I wanted to talk about was letting um, one's tools become a crutch. Um, in my personal experience, that was um, the use of the white gel pen. I, I love to throw like anime sparkles everywhere, all over my artwork, but I have used those sparkles to cover up mistakes, um, which can lead to um, a sloppier art piece overall. Um, it might cover the mistake, but also one has to think about how many sparkles can you add to a piece before you get rid of all the contrast or you cover up um, the line work or you know things just don't look right and purposeful anymore. Another one I wanted to talk about was using the symmetry tool um, or more like overusing the symmetry tool. Um, I used it I think once or twice in digital art while drawing faces um although i think i used it in the sketch which definitely helped made it make it look less obvious but um using the symmetry tool to draw faces um isn't exactly its intended purpose and it can definitely make your art look stiffer um and it can definitely uh make the face look like it was made by a robot or something um just because it's you know too too correct if you will, and it doesn't look natural and human anymore. The symmetry tool is really great for like patterns and graphic design, but um, I don't know if anyone else is guilty of this that I know of, but I think I've seen some art around that definitely looks like the symmetry tool was heavily used on faces, um, and it just never quite looked right to me. I don't know. Obviously, these tools are a great help to artists and they have their, their place. Um, obviously, I still love covering my art in like sparkles and stuff. I just try to use less, not because of the sparkle factor necessarily, but just so that it doesn't, it doesn't look quite so much like I'm relying on the sparkles to make the piece look pretty. Um, because obviously I want people to see the line art and I want them to see and appreciate the colors and stuff. So I found to hold back a little bit is to uh, make it look better, I think. Um, and the symmetry tool is obviously a fantastic tool, um, but it can, it can be a hindering if it's a crutch, I think. Bad art habit number two I wanted to talk about um, is kind of a bundle of a habit. Um, it could be like desperation for an art style. It could also be comparison to other artists um, because really to communicate the entirety of what I'm uh, trying to communicate with this one, it kind of crosses over into, I think, um, having better ter like different terms that could describe it. Um, so art style desperation is what I'm calling uh, like the, the art community in general's like obsession with finding an art style. Um, obviously, um, you want your art to look unique and uniquely yours. Um, but I identify with this one very much because yeah, um, anyways, but yeah, um, the desperation to have your art look unique or memorable um, because I feel like art style is really emphasized in like um, the art career world today just because um, it's so I think 
necessary to build a portfolio or even like a community online uh, for your artwork. But when you're like, you know, 13, 14, you don't have to have it all figured out, um, which I feel uh, needs to be stressed a little bit. I think about three years ago, I had this conversation with a friend. Um, I was drawing in my sketchbook and she looked over at my art and said, what you drawing? And I said, I'm mimicking the art style of these artists I see online um, because my art doesn't really look like theirs. And she, she told, she like just kind of laughed at me, like not outright laughed at me, but it was kind of like, that's ridiculous stop <laughs> like she like why would you want your art to look like anyone else's you know like that doesn't really make any sense and it sounds I mean it's it's a valid feeling you know like it's it's okay to feel like I don't know imposter syndrome almost but you don't want your art to look exactly like everyone else's and I feel like that's already a trend that's popping up in the art world um, with like Cartoon Network shows and like artists on social media there's definitely like some aesthetics that are just drawn over and over again in the same way in the same pattern I think I think the best way to kind of find your quote-unquote art style um is to really just experiment and draw things exactly how you want to draw them obviously it's okay to take inspiration from artists around you but don't feel like you have to draw exactly like them just because they're popular and you also want to be popular or just because you like that one art style you don't have to draw exactly like it you can if you want but don't feel like you have to limit yourself might end up missing out on a way that you like to draw things even more just because you're limiting yourself which would be horrible it would be a horrible way to hold yourself back and it's definitely something that i identify with a lot because a couple years ago i really did hold myself in that place where i wanted to draw like other people the final bad art habit I wanted to talk about um, is also kind of a bundle. Um, I'm calling it same picture syndrome. It's kind of same character syndrome, same face syndrome, and also like using the same color palette over and over again. And it kind of coincides with the like art style desperation type of thing, um, just because it can kind of come from that place of insecurity and wanting your art to stand out and look like yours uniquely. However, it's important to be aware that if you're drawing the same face with the same color palette, um, it can also make your art look uh, repetitive, um, which, you know, if you enjoy making your art, you know, that's fine, but you don't want to end up bored and stuck and unable to try new things just because you have such a limited and specific comfort zone. Um, but, you know, again, art is subjective and if you enjoy the process of your art that's really the most important part um i've just found that it really limited me technically um because actually i'm still really presently guilty of this habit um i find myself coming back to uh like comfort zones that are very very limited in spite of me practicing and getting better at doing other parts of uh, like like other, other poses, other color palettes, um, I still come back to the same thing. So yeah, if you're guilty of any of these or all of these, um, you're definitely not alone. Um, let me know if there are other bad art habits that uh, you think stand out to you um, in either your own work or you've seen it like trending a lot in the community. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye!